Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with legendary jazz saxophonist George Garzon, one of jazz's greatest tenors and one of the most revered educators in the world. He opened up about the 2019 city three nights in L.A., the sound of four jazz masters communicating in a highly evolved common language, drawing on years of shared experience and an inexhaustible love for the music, released on drummer Peter Erskine's Fuzzy Music imprint. This all happened in January of 2019 at the beautiful new Los Angeles Jazz Club, Sam First. Joining George and Peter was pianist Alan Pasqua and bassist Derek Oles. It's a great story, so dig this interview, my friends. Hi, George. It's been a while. So first of all, it's great to catch back up with you here at Neon Jazz about three nights in L.A. Thanks for taking some time out, and it's an honor and a pleasure to again talk with you. Of course. My pleasure. So the cover of this album looks like the movie L.A. Story, and I love the sound of this recording. So tell me how you got this power lineup together to record this kind of jazz magic. Well... If I give it to you verbatim, one day I was on uh, Instant Messenger and I saw Pete and he was, you know, talking. And so I said, hey, Pete, how you doing, you know? And really, this, um, uh, I really, it was the wildest thing that I ever happened. He said, oh, I can't talk right now because I'm going to uh, the release of this guitar player's record on my label. I said, oh, Pete, you have a label? He said, yeah. I said, oh, I would love to play on it. Then there was a little silence, and he's like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to blah, 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 and rah, rah, rah. And the next thing I know, I'm flying out to L.A. to record at Sam First with, you know, one of my heroes. I mean, that's how it all started. You know, he had a great engineer. The club was great. It was just, you know, monster musicians, Al, and I, you know, have known for years. Uh, Dodic, you know, plays with Pete anyway, and it was it was just like a shoe-in, you know. You know, we went in and recorded these tunes that I feel came out to be masterpieces because we we were just playing and having fun. So for the common listener out there or a non-musician type, it would seem as though you were just having a good conversation with these cats on stage. Is it safe to say that you would all be just having this kind of conversation that you had on stage, off stage? <laughs> exactly. It's exactly that. I mean, you know, you're talking about a high level of musicianship here that's sometimes transcends even the music. You know, people that have worked so long and hard on their instruments that uh, they know what it takes to communicate. And a lot of this record is about that. You know, it's not the standard, let's record this record and, you know, we'll play the head, then you solo, then this guy solos, bass solo, and back to the head. I mean, we literally, with the exception of a few tunes, did this thing off the cuff. So I always ask this question, if you have a dream tonight and run into your younger self, say 20 years ago, what advice would you give your younger self? But I'm going to revise this question and say, if all of you guys went back 20 years and tried to make this recording, would you guys be able to still capture the magic that you guys have acquired over all of these years of wisdom that you've gotten on your jazz road? Well, Joe, if you don't mind me saying, first of all, I am my younger self right now. I think I feel younger at 69 than I ever have in my life. Again, the level of musicianship, they were there 20 years ago. I mean, I recorded a record for Mike Manieri's label. When I listen to that, it's called Alone. It's a tribute to Stan Getz. It still sounds as good to me now as it did yesterday. I mean, as far as these players and the leverage... I mean, I really think they were playing like this back then. As far as me, just the maturity of my sound. My sound comes from, it's a family-given sound, like Joe Lovano's, uh, who was taught by his father. Well, I was taught by my Uncle Rocco. And I really think that, you know, the progression of playing for a long time helps the sound progress into what it is now. Out of all the possible tunes that you guys could have picked for this album, how did you all arrive at the final stack of music that you came up with for this recording? 
Oh, good questions, Joe. I wanted to come out and show that you could play standard tunes and still make them exciting. You know, a lot of people, they don't want to play Have You Met Miss Jones, All the Things You Are, Invitation, because they feel it's old hat or old school. But the improvisational technique or concept that I've put together allows you to play and feel you know, inventory over these type of tunes. So, and you know, these guys were so cool about everything. I think they knew ahead of time what was going to, going to happen. So I don't think it really mattered what we played. The great thing about Jazz Cats is that you were all so talented and precise. You know, you hear these stories of, say, the Rolling Stones or Radiohead going into the studio and it takes four to six months to do a recording. But you all do it relatively fast, and it's always magical. How did this bode in the process of all of you coming together to record this album live in L.A.? Oh, Joe, are you kidding me? I mean, th this engineer came in with a laptop and some microphones and laid this baby down. And, you know, I, I know Peter and how he operates, and I, when I looked over and I saw that, I was like, wow, this cat must be the cat, you know? So... The recording quality is probably one of the highest I've ever experienced. If you don't mind me being selfish, the way he recorded my sound is probably the best I've ever heard ever, ever in my life. There are so many recordings out there that fans can choose from, but let's say a fan picks this album up. How do you want them to feel about this particular recording? There's all kinds of ways that you can look at it. Uh, you can be cerebral and write these really heavy tunes in you know, odd meters and, and spend time with the band trying to learn the tunes, which I really respect. You know, it's unbelievable when I hear some of my kids that write these tunes that even I couldn't play. And it, the time that they put into figuring out how to make this happen, it, it still blows my mind. For me, you know, being of this generation of what I am, I think I can do that in what the, what they play in a 4-4 four, four sequence, you know, which is almost the same thing, minus, you know, transcending the different uh, odd meter times. But again, I think it's really the harmonic continuity that I'm throwing down over Alan and what he's giving back to me because his ears are so wide, he accepts and doesn't negate really, Joe, anything that I do. So I would think this album is a great testament to how jazz is doing in America in 2019. How does that bode with you? Oh, that, that's so great to hear you say that. It's it's amazing. I, I'm just blown away that people are hearing it like that. I mean, this, is a, this concept for me that I've worked on, the triadic chromatic approach, is something I developed on my own, and I took a chance you know, putting it together back in Boston, teaching at Berkeley, playing gigs. You know, and it was a time when maybe it didn't sound as solid and people were really questioning, you know, my accountability to what was happening. But this record proves, and I tell the kids out there and the students and the musicians, to stick to your guns in what you're doing because I'm the perfect example of someone who did that just kept on that path until I reached this point. So you're always taking care of Boston. You spent three nights in L.A. I think we'd take one night here in Kansas City if that works for you. In Kansas City? I'm coming. You let me know. <laughs> hey, George, thank you for taking some time out. Good luck with everything. We love this recording. I can't wait to play it for my audience. Thanks. Thank you so much, man. Keep it going, okay? Bye-bye. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview where we give you a bit of insight into the finest cats in Los Angeles, Boston, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to George for his time, class, and honesty. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store, visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com, and for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon.
Neon Jazz. <laughs> 